everybody, welcome to Primus Radio. Uh, we are here with the program B for Belarus uh, with our beloved Vlad Varanić. Vlad, hello. Hello. Vlad is a country a consultant and media analyst, and today we are going to talk about the issue or the theme presidential election campaign in uh, the authoritarian country, meaning um, Belarus, of course, and we're talking about peculiarity of the campaigning, and we always put the word election in inverted commerce to differentiate it from from a real election campaign that every democratic country faces. So how do you evaluate uh, what is going on around as uh, we have an unprecedented scale of people who are detained? Over 1,100 1, people were detained or are in uh, behind bars, uh, two presidential contenders, potential presidential contenders, uh, are behind bars under criminal investigation. Uh, unprecedented and unique combination of uh, ladies politicians who emerged in Belarus as uh, new faces. How do you see that? How different is this political campaign from uh, the previous ones? Well, you know, in, in, in two words you can you certainly answer. We have many more words to say. Yes, <laughs> but, you know, this, uh, this uh, well, first of all, let's say campaign, let's say this, uh, when we talk about elections, it's, of course we have to say it in metaphorical way, mm -hmm. since it's more like le le legitimization of uh, the current ruler. And so anyone who, you know, by, by default, he is, you know, like we've been talking, I think we've been talking about this mm -hmm. in our very first program mm -hmm. uh, about general situation. Yeah, but we are now in the heat of the political yes. campaign. We have four. But uh, uh, de facto, we have, mm -hmm. we have here monarchy. Mm -hmm. And so we have a ruling monarch, tsar, or king, whatever, or pharaoh. Uh, so it's... Um, and anyone, anyone who, uh, is, who dares to challenge him in this position by default is like an enemy of people. Yeah, but uh, we're talking so, about like benevolent monarch or an evil czar. Well, that's question... Uh, that's... Hard to say, you know, it depends <laughs> where you stand on this point. Well, uh, if you are not part of this uh, close circle uh, to the Tsar of Belarus, then you have a different opinion. Especially, what really surprises me in uh, Belarus today, as uh, Lukashenko definitely has full control over all election processes, he does not let any people from the opposition uh, to be members of the election uh, 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 of uh, election uh, commissions. Uh, recently, he made the decision was made to restrict observers uh, from observing elections. So he orchestrates everything he wants. But how can you explain the brutality police use against uh, people who stand in lines, who want to make appeals to the Central Election Commission, who, was, who stood in line to buy t-shirts with national symbols. So that was unique because police uh, deliberately uh, used force to uh, humiliate people, to show to young people that they are dirt. You know, uh, um, since in most of my, um, you know, creative approach, let's say since I'm also a literate mm -hmm. man, you know, I mean, uh, writer, I see, mm -hmm. yes, and, uh, and, and journalist, mm -hmm. and very cynical, you know, I am um, too cynical, as always is with uh, utmost cynicism I write about our talks. And uh, talking about benevolence, Mm -hmm. And, you know, asked about is this Tsar benevolent or not. Well, in comparison, there, there was a guy, you know, his, uh, his colleague in Africa who was eating his mm -hmm. uh, opponents. So since uh, mm -hmm. nobody eats mm -hmm. opponents here, so he's very <laughs> benevolent. You're right. Compared to uh, 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 Central African yes. regime, uh, we live in democracy. Right. There was a fat guy who was eating, yeah. yeah. Compared <laughs> even to Turkmenistan, yes. or Uzbekistan, I believe, so, Belarus is a free even country. even comparison with in comparison with well with um, France where they disperse um, crowds with tear gas and you know, rubber bullets here's very mild you know it's like uh, 
they almost invite people to follow them to 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 precinct and uh, no, it's like yeah, but you look at the <laughs> United States right what this black lives matter yes. what they do they uh, crush everything around they uh, attack police they uh, use violence to yes. pro- violate property rights they are bruisers uh, you know likewise in France in Belarus people just clap they want to enjoy like people like walking uh, along the avenues and wanted to enjoy the fountain and suddenly uh, special troop people in black attacked them brutally they were put behind bars they tortured them because now when people were not let uh, to the toilet people were not given water people were forced to stand like six hours in cold without yeah. any reason that's torture Well, that's a typical action of intimidation. They said that uh, uh, it's tough, but not brutal, I would say, uh, because in comparison to what could be, mm-hmm. I'm afraid we'll, we'll see brutal approach uh, mm-hmm. in, in, uh, in future after election results will be announced and people and crowds of people will go on streets mm-hmm. that will be the the suppression will be i think will be brutal mm-hmm. but for now it's it looks like it's uh, they try to warn them not to do that on that date it just mm-hmm. like you know it's a, like preventive action uh, kind of um, i don't know it's just like uh, warning Mm-hmm. what's what's to come so um, that's what I, 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 I that's what I how I perceive the actions because no other logical reason mm-hmm. I mean why if people uh, you know line to buy uh, t-shirts with national symbols or anti say presidential symbols mm-hmm. I don't know what what, what was there mm-hmm. uh, it was written something you know just like as he might understand is derogatory to him like about i think now it's popular to write graffiti and which is you know three mm-hmm. percent it's mm-hmm. uh, according to some poll they which is i think very doubtful they they announced that he has support only of three percent of population mm-hmm. and his opponent who is now in prison he has got 97 percent mm-hmm. that's it's baloney it's mm-hmm. evidently uh, not less than 30 percent I would mm-hmm. say because you know there were other polls and other uh, opinions collected but, uh, yeah, but look at uh, the this campaign uh, I think Lukashenko was uh, really offended and he was hurt by this uh, cockroach comparison this uh, one thing yes. that you know Uh, and there's a Russian fairy tale about yeah, this yes. evil cockroach yes, and yes, yes. how to eliminate it, right? Another thing is that is really metaphorical, of course, at 3%. And uh, some people uh, just took that for, for granted and said, well, for the for face value, saying that Lukashenko's uh, popularity is just 3%, so let's get rid of them, of him. And many young people just wanted to express their solidarity with people for change. And uh, then Lukashenko, I think, uh, in all previous campaigns, the repression machine uh, was launched after the elections. So you see 2010, 2006, events, uh, 2001, when uh, when the Lukashenko declared his elegant victory right now we see the opposite one month prior to the election date we see a huge wave of repression of brutality of uh, force against anybody who wanted even to take part in the election campaign That's what I call the Belarusian relay. You mm-hmm. know, it's like Russian relay. You know, right. there is a revolver with one mm-hmm. cartridge. Yeah, right. And mm-hmm. here we have a pistol with <laughs> with one cartridge. Doesn't matter. Uh, the, the casino always wins in this case. <laughs> so uh, uh, that's you know this this joke. I'm using it. Mm-hmm. I've been using it for for decades. Let's say it's Belarusian relay and white Russian relay because Belarus is white Russian. What is other? Uh, <laughs> oh come on! I don't, well, I don't like that. Belarus, <laughs> Belarus is literally means. Well, it's not white Russia or well, white Russland in Germany. Yes, in German but uh, well, it's you know 
how, how would like to interpret this? That's that very, very, white very people very live here. So. Derogatory, very abusive. No, 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 why? Right. It is not. This is cool. You know, in the United States, when I was asked, white, white is white, <laughs> I would ask them, uh, well, within, we know, they know Russia. That's I a say, racial we comment, know. Vlad. Of course. <laughs> the I, right, I, especially I the like, Black Lives Matter. Of course, I like, you know, you like these parts. You know, they ask, well, why this is white? Russia I say well you have uh, you know black people yes so we're white how can you explain mm -hmm. the acknowledgement Lukashenko made recently that he has lost youth not he personally but the regime has lost youth meaning that young people are not uh, under the spell of this authoritarian regime they don't like the economic model they don't like the way young people are treated and young people uh, I think that they respond with the same manner. They uh, don't like the regime, they want change, but at the same time uh, the open question is whether they will be willing to uh, show up on the 9th of August to demonstrate and to defend the result and to uh, demand new free fair election or they will just pack their suitcases and leave for good. Uh, taking uh, the last premise uh, that they would pack uh, cases, the problem they can't pay, pack cases now due to isolation of uh, Belarus, due to COVID-19. Uh, well, s s right now they can't even go to Russia. We still have one month to go. <laughs> no, well, we, we, we don't know. But I mean, as for now, it just uh, maybe coincidence, mm -hmm. bad coincidence. Mm -hmm. It just happened so that uh, these young people who would otherwise maybe they would already mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. or go on vacation or mm -hmm. go on to study it doesn't matter I mean some somebody would go to Russia to work remember we, we've been talking last time uh, that uh, uh, there are about one million guest workers mm -hmm. in Belarus who would you know normally be in Russia now they stay at home with no means to exist mm -hmm. I mean Russia does not allow them to, to enter so all this mess of um, well unhappy people let's say uh, they they are confined to this mm -hmm. territory of Belarus mm -hmm. and uh, certainly this raises the level of um, let's say protest and negative attitude so all these factors they might contribute to that mm -hmm. and you say about um, he lost current president lost young people he you know he had lost them long time ago but but at the same time you know we're young people into their villages they, maybe yeah, but villages um, but you see now villages completely almost completely moved to to Minsk or a, we have or a little bit more than two million people living in the rural area and over about 80 percent of the population living in cities so, so that's this kind of claim that Lukashenko is supported by the village uh, so okay. no longer But even if we have like two million people, so like a million and a half, mm -hmm. uh, excluding drunkards and people who never show up for any election. Oh, yes. But uh, out of almost seven million voters, that's a big number. So he must uh, rely on other people to get at least some support. How do you explain this myth? Uh, that he's been again uh, promoting uh, recently and uh, every day almost right now that uh, he is the savior of Belarus from hunger, from destitute, from uh, all possible uh, d d well uh, evils of the in beginning of the 90s. You remember when the uh, wages yeah, were very low. He won the war. He won Actually, the war. He won. The, he won everything that he made Belarus. As Actually, the know independence it now. begins its uh, the date of independence. When yeah, third Minsk of, was third of July, right? Instead of Minsk uh, was liberated uh, from uh, from Nazi occupants. Uh, so when he uh, tries to appeal and to uh, impact, influence uh, people's fears, does he have anything but these fears of the uh, destitute, poverty, misery of the 90s? Uh, why it does it mean that his only election base is uh, baby boomers of Belarus? People over 55 who remember those times and we remember those times oh, yes. and we know that by 1994 Belarus there was not a single Belarusian who uh, died of hunger uh, Belarus was not the country uh, wearing rugs sure. uh, on the street the Belarus even Minsk even in the uh, 
decaying Soviet times was a beautiful city with well-dressed people, stylish in the way they wanted, but it never experienced hunger, it never experienced yes. destitute. And Lukashenko tries to present himself as a leader who saved Belarus, Belarusians from these bad things that were, never, never, were not around. Does he uh, want uh, to uh, rewrite history? Do, does he believe that people would uh, buy this kind of rhetoric? Well, hard to say what he believes in. Uh, the thing is that uh, this kind of propaganda, what he described, his, I would call it his staple propaganda. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, the, whole, the whole ideology of modern Belarus, including symbols and mm -hmm. everything, you know, new symbols, mm -hmm. which we... we he, his symbols, in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, they include all this premise that uh, so the history of Belarus begins... Uh, after the war mm -hmm. and uh, you know Belarus won the war mm -hmm. and remember when he was talking to veterans he said well my father also died no, in yeah, the yeah. war although he was born in the 56 I guess. Slip of the tongue as he later explained. Well that's, that's his manner of speech you know he believes in what he in the most say, obvious lies. Uh, well, I would say fantasize. It's fantasize. like, you know, yesterday he was... I would, I would call it lies, actually. It is nature of his character that could be a sort of fantasy, you know. No, but Vlad, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, if you uh, d define it in terms of true or false, it's definitely a lie. Like yesterday, he uh, opened a polyclinic, a medical uh, institution, oh, yes. and said, oh, this is it, this is our achievement, our healthcare system is wonderful. But it's worth mentioning that this, but that particular uh, polyclinic uh, was under construction for 11 years. 11 years. Oh, yes. This is the time that shows inefficiency of the system. It shows how bad the whole system is governed. And he tries to present that as a kind of his achievement. Likewise with bridges. Some He opened a bridge uh, like two days ago and it is under construction right now because it just uh, it, it's not functioning properly. This is it's like we're showing off, it's putting on airs, it's just a false impression of prosperity. Um, you see, this again, this is type of propaganda he's been using all the time, you know, he, he there was a joke that uh, he's uh, a bridegroom at every wedding and a um, um, later died person at every funeral, mm -hmm. so he's in the center and he's the main reason to everything, he's the motor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he behinds everything, so behind... Uh, you see, behind every good thing and, and automatically right. behind the bad thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, in times when, when people are unhappy, he, you know, he presents them, well, I am your savior. Of course, I mean, what, what else he can present? That's natural for propaganda. Another thing that uh, how people react and uh, so for, for his part, nothing is new. It's everything has been for the past not even 26 years, but when he was before his presidency, he, mm -hmm. he was in parliament. Mm -hmm. He was talking all the time. I remember mm -hmm. because this, uh, those, uh, it was uh, online all the mm -hmm. time on mm -hmm. the radio. Mm -hmm. uh, all this, you know, this parliament, Belarusian parliament was working uh, online uh, when we, they're talking, we could hear mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, right. That was and open. he's been talking about this all the time. It's like every election. Lukashenko said that Belarus is the urge of the cliff and it is about to fall and he's the only guy who can save Belarus from falling. Right now it's also like he's been saying, well, praising himself for economic social achievement. At the same time he said, oh gosh, if we are not careful enough, we don't consolidate, uh, Belarus will fall off the cliff and will burst into pieces. This is kind of, and many people, because he uh, does not consolidate people anymore, he uh, appeal. He tries to uh, to ignite people's fear. Fear, uh, yes. At the absolutely. same time, he tries to ignite people's envy. Look at this attack, assault.
assault on bankers. Bankers oh, yes. are fat cats. Yeah, bankers evil, evil guys, are yeah. evil guys. Bankers must be put behind bars. It's like this is the reason Babarika is behind give, bars. Or at least give what they robbed. Yeah, that's right. So they, they always rob. They stole over well, 500 billion dollar dollars from no, you now, taxpayers. Now they have to pensions. share. Now they yeah, it, share. It urges them to share all it's, that. And, and people, you know, it's, uh, some people believe in it. Well, because, you see, fear is very strong motivation and very strong incentive, I would say. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, when we talk about fear... Hunger. People are always afraid of hunger, fear, pain. Mm -hmm. And if uh, you propose them, are you going to live well, <laughs> or are you going not to live in, say, torture? Uh -huh. Well, of course, they would choose the later because you know pain is uh, worse than right. uh, some discomfort. That's so right. that's uh, so. In the, for, logically, that's very strong and uh, uh, we've seen past in history many such guys would use that. Mm -hmm. So, it's nothing new again here. Uh, well, of course, in past he was um, uh, boasting about achievements, mm -hmm. but now since no achievements, you know, parents such vivid, so... Peace. It, it, yes, uh, peace. Oh, this, peace of lard and peace of bread peace, on the peace, table is yes. still around. Yes, that's correct. Uh, so, you, you you have to, you know, just you, you don't, you, you want war? Well, don't elect me. I mean, if you don't want war, so I am your guy. Because otherwise I'm a peacemaker. Uh, you'll get uh, peace preserver uh, you'll get uh, Ukra second Ukraine second Ukraine right. uh, civil war or oligarchs are like in Russia or you know ruthless criminals like in Russia or evil billionaires like in the United States it's yeah, always now, trying to well, find the United States is a good example now mm -hmm. there is uh, you know this madness with uh, getting rid of police <laughs> there and with mobs on streets well Man, that's that's the good time for him. You know, it's a disaster for uh, America and the the way American society and the government uh, is handling that is outrageous. It's really the way the West is falling apart. Uh, instead of, you know, many small government is about police and army That's and madness. judiciary. Sure and this madness. is really sheer madness. <laughs> Some people say anarchy. This is it. This is it. You say anarchy. Man, what's going on in the United States? You know, I've been in past, I've been a specialist in America. It was, you know, uh, mm -hmm. my PhD was in, in, uh, in American literature of the South and folk Mm -hmm. And uh, man, it's uh, it's a great contrast, and uh, it's I mean, a sheer man. But at the same time, for propaganda here, it's a gift. All right. Uh, again, uh, there is one thing which uh, many people don't know, or I mean, especially external observers don't know. Just happened something irrational come in going on mm -hmm. here. Every time when this crucial mm -hmm. point of uh, mm -hmm. his, let's say, elections or, well, mostly elections or there was a referendum mm -hmm. in two, two, 2004, uh, the, the external world, he always gets, the, even taking mm -hmm. 1999, uh, um, 2000, no, no, Two, 2001, there, were, there was, you know, attack on uh, mm -hmm. on those, uh, mm -hmm. on New York, you know, this World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. He had his campaign at that time also. And so the world uh, was concerned mm -hmm. about other things, not with Belarus. So this time is the perfect of all times because uh, of the hottest uh, summit of the Un European Union it was almost it's about to fall and uh, yeah. it was uh, the magic COVID that it's COVID-19 and right? you know events in United States uh, these uh, things in with China with economy even the first time in uh, modern Belarusian history we have no observation team from OSCE you know mm -hmm. ODIR you know which is called uh, this yeah. uh, Human rights uh, team did not team come. Team of OEC, right? It's COVID nineteen and essential. So it and, means and, and internal observation is also very limited. But uh, one more question. Uh, right now, was we have this what I call a very fundamental break or conflict of generations. On the one hand, we have baby boomers. On the other hand, you have Generation X, Generation Z, that people are younger than twenty seven. 
and mo many of them uh, will be invited to vote and uh, at the same time they uh, communicate with teachers, doctors, the trade unions, people who started working. Uh, how can we uh, deliver this, build bridges between generations? Uh, this generation, among generations in general, because we have millennials that are in between, and uh, they have different, of course, values of different attitudes. At the same time, what we observe here is that internal uh, dialogue does not exist. People are fragmented, people are self-isolated within their own like social network, Ages, what do we call e uh, escapism? Right now, we see also uh, this fragmentation of the Belarusian political and uh, civil society, and uh, old people who lived in the times of uh, depravity and injustice. They uh, don't like, or to put it mildly, hate young people who have cars, who who uh, have never suffered any uh, poverty, any uh, any deficits in their lives. At the same time, that they they uh, have they are more susceptible to this fear of war, uh, of uh, conflict, and uh, they cement at least 30% of the support for Lukashenko and uh, in the situation when uh, nobody controls from the civil society and the political opposition election and teachers and doctors and trade unions and this, uh, this uh, proletariat they have don't understand the way that they steal future from these young people so my point is that uh, grannies and grandfathers and grandmothers essentially when they give toys to their grandchildren that's one thing but fundamentally they steal young uh, future of their own grandchildren and drive them out of the country with all their efforts correct that's uh, the, the the very Belarusian dream is now I have a dream it's uh, go to outside go to, go to, out to other country leave uh, when you migrate. talk about again uh, one note uh, when you talk about some people would not understand when mm -hmm. talk about trade unions it's official trade unions. yeah it's, it's yeah, like like a workers party under ruling regime so it's just uh, no we have I think we have only one independent trade union in Belarus right yeah we have independent trade it's but electronic it's, uh, yeah, but it's uh, limited, uh, limited uh, influence yeah. at the same time we have trade unions that is like four million members right this all official, state sector officially it's automatically if, workers, you, if you go right. to work to a state uh, some state entity Factory, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. some other like it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. hospital, mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. belongs to the state. Mm -hmm. uh, you automatically uh, enrolled into this yep. uh, trade union, and they take money for you know the fee there. Mm -hmm. So just automatically uh, involves everybody. So it's, that's uh, how election commission. Uh, it's like a chair of the chairman of the election commission is a boss of the workers, and workers right. uh, are members of the election commission. And this is one team of one enterprise or so one organization. Right. It's like director of a school is uh, in charge. Yeah. Of of, of, uh, teachers, of that's the most shameful that you know these teachers they, are, they take part in this uh, manipulation mm -hmm. actually they cheat you know they, yeah. they is uh, because there is no real the problem with when I say that we have no elections because elections can mm -hmm. be there where uh, vo uh, votes uh, mm -hmm. are being counted mm -hmm. and here it just they give you um, Approved figure. That's it. Mm -hmm. No, no observers. Nothing. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, well. Uh, if you look in other in past when uh, international missions were present here, there are a lot of reports about abuses, about how this. And uh, I, I guess uh, the only uh, for past like 15 mm -hmm. years, all elections were announced as invalid due to mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. The only elections, as far as I remember, we had uh, elections, then referendum, elections in 94. Mm -hmm. I was working actually for SE uh, observation team at that time. And th those were real elections. Then we had referendum in 95. Right. That mm -hmm. was real referendum. Um, after that, there was nothing.
And That's right. So now, uh, what are your expectations of the things to come on the 9th of August and afterwards? Well, very groomed scenario. Actually, uh, I, you know, I've been talking about it to, to, to friends and warning, trying to warn young people not to go, I mean, to take this into account and follow my warning. Um, first of all, there will be result announced, I guess, mm -hmm. 75, 76, um, I th think, I think there will be 76 percent voted for current president. Like 78 is, or 76 percent announced or declared as an elegant Well, victory. it will be announced, officially it will be announced that, uh, say, mm -hmm. I don't know, 70 percent maybe, say, took part mm -hmm. in the elections, although there will mm -hmm. be maybe 40 percent only coming to. Um, after that, Mm -hmm. Those people, you know, who are in charge of current, let's say, this dream team of, you mm -hmm. know, this, uh, they call them this female uh, new Amazons, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this female three, three fairies, ladies, three ladies, three fairies three ladies, of the new political uh, uh, hope. In well, Bonus. let's say, well, they, they, we, there are the people. I mean, there are men behind them, but I mean, at no, least but I think that uh, this talking about Svetlana uh, Tikhonovska, at least, uh, I think that her behavior and attitude is very noble because her only goal is to free her husband, who is in uh, prison, and. Uh, Allegedly, he's being tortured there. I can imagine how bad it is. So her instinct, her passion is to save her husband, her family from repression and uh, from this kind of very bad state. Likewise, uh, Babarika team. Uh, we have like over 20 people behind bars. We have strong pressure on uh, Valery Zipkala and his wife. So this is not the way to treat political opponents. And of course... Yes, but I mean, uh, taking apart this, I mean, let's... Um Let's uh, not take this. In. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I mean about scenario. Mm -hmm. but anyway, these people, no matter what motives they have, maybe they're mistaken, maybe they're true. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, in their belief, I mean, uh, it's sincere in their belief. Uh, after this elections uh, results will be announced. Uh, there will be, there will certainly call people to the square to the with the mm -hmm. capital S, square. Mm -hmm. So it was in uh, 2010. Mm -hmm. And certainly there will be, um, let's say, I call this uh, a lesson mm -hmm. of disobedience, of a lesson of punishment for, mm -hmm. of, for disobedience for next mm -hmm. 10 years mm -hmm. to come. So I think it will be very brutal. A lot of people will suffer physically, uh, financially, mm -hmm. due to fines. Some will go to prisons for long terms, mm -hmm. as we've seen this in 2010. And mm -hmm. we've seen the rehearsal of mm -hmm. this, um, let's say, suppression of such protest mm -hmm. in 2018. On 20, 25th yeah, of March, against so-called freeloaders and uh, uh, there was no, no, there was yeah, there no? was uh, the so-called uh, Freedom Day when uh, oh, freedom first day. Uh, when what is considered by national-oriented people in Belarus, mm -hmm. which is the true. Mm -hmm. uh, true Independence Day, uh, mm -hmm. which was announced in 1918, mm -hmm. um, before Bolsheviks took it over. Took it over right. It was, although it was under German occupation, I mean that Kaiser, a German occupation, but it was announced the Belarusian People's Republic, mm -hmm. and we still have a working and and um, accepted by U.S. government. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Council of Belarusian the Republic, Republic, Republic in the United time, States. Right. So it's quite, um, let's say, semi-official. Right, so, so let's uh, summarize. I think that first, of course, Belarus uh, uh, is not having free and fair democratic election. We have one of the worst uh, repressive political campaign in 2020. Lukashenko is the weakest in all his 26 years. His position is aggravated by economic crisis, by uh, energy crisis, by the budgetary crisis, so COVID-19, the way he handled uh, education healthcare system is definitely outrageous 
and it opened the eyes of many people who saw that the government that is uh, that uh, owns 80% of all assets that distributes over 50% of GDP cannot handle this uh, this, this disease in a proper way uh, focusing on the people rather than on the gross indicators and right now we will also see this anger growing uh, among ordinary people who were uh, neutral to politics and uh, one of the reasons people are opening their eyes and become, becoming more active is the way the way police brutally treat them. Even I, I can imagine you walk on the street in Minsk enjoying fountains and suddenly uh, bad big black guys in black uniform meaning <laughs> attack you, put you in this uh, special uh, truck and torture you for six hours. Oh, yes. And this is like you talk it to you, you just put, uh, have a video, you talk it uh, through social networks and this is something that was unheard of 20 years ago. So this regime is definitely under control, but it, it is eating itself from inside. And it is good because many more people inside the regime also, they also feel that it's, not, well, uh, they don't want to have Lukashenko around anymore. So it's a matter of time when we have a major political change. I doubt that it will be on the 9th of, the, of August, but still I think that we are in for a very interesting turbulent times in politics and hopefully that will open a window of opportunity for young people for intellectuals for those people who want to have free Belarus yeah certainly uh, this regime won't be changed in the street as like in other countries it happened because uh, you know, this current political regime is very strong Physically, I would say, mm -hmm. I mean, physically, I mean, like, they have power, police enough, and they will pay, they're still loyal to the regime. That's right. Uh, but as history shows us, uh, most likely this regime is, well, again, we, we don't, for those who we've been talking about in past, remember mm -hmm. that uh, this regime is, uh, well, Belarusian independence is, let's say it's not as independent uh, because this regime is mostly like a puppet of Russia. There, are, there, are, there is tension between Russia and uh, you know those who are here because of those that to, they want money etc. It's about money but still Russia controls the situation and uh, if you read you know Russian analysts uh, who are mm -hmm. who you know, talking about Belarus, they say, well, there is Lukashenko, is the only good guy there, he does not allow, uh, you know, nationalists, fascists uh, to, to, take to take over Belarus, Belarus, like they took over Ukraine, and they That's talk right. about, you know, West, Western, right. and uh, That's so... the Russian world perspective of rebuilding historical yes. Russia. Yes, uh, here's the, the question of uh, how Russia will behave in all this situation. Because I think that Russia will step in after 9th of uh, August. Uh, I see that uh, after uh, Mishustin's Prime Minister of Russia visits to Belarus, uh, Russia is trying to distance itself by the same time it has so many crew so many uh, layers of uh, influence on Belarus that I think that uh, this Russian Belarusian affair will be on the table after the political uh, turmoil somehow is relatively over okay Vlad thank you very much for your input uh, dear friends that was Vlad Baranich country consultant and media analyst we we discuss we discuss the issue of the theme presidential election campaign in the authoritarian country and its peculiarity it's uh, way, the way uh, we live in it the way we see the situation from inside uh, we wish every participant, every civil activism health and freedom at the same time please uh, make sure that you are safe and uh, and, uh, and alive uh, because stay anything, away from stay crowds away. Uh, being brave does mean go looking for trouble this yeah, is a major from... major uh, theme that I urge you to keep in mind. Uh, stay with Primus. Uh, this is a Beef of Belarus program. Uh, we have program uh, programs mostly in Russian but this is a unique uh, opportunity for people who uh, live outside uh, our country and don't know Russian to have an, uh, some awareness of what's going on here. Stay with us. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>